Hello and a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Vikas Nandia with TV Asia's brand new The Cyber Watch Show. Ladies and gentlemen, in the very beginning, Happy New Year to you. It's the time for new beginnings and hence we have with us a new program on our platform, The Cyber Watch Show. Now technology day by day plays a pivotal role in our life. If you are an internet user, if you use smartphones, smart TV, smartwatch, everything smart around you, then perhaps this program is for you. On the program, we will talk about the different facets of technology, how it is impacting our life and what the future holds for us. We have with us a special guest who will be joining us in every other episode with some top-notch CEOs and prominent personalities. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest on the program is Lalit Alawalia, who's flown in all the way from Dallas, Texas to New Jersey to our headquarters. Now, Lalit is a cyber security expert. He knows his game very well in the cyber space. He has been heading some of the top-notch multinational companies and has traveled across the globe extensively. An expert on cyber world, if you have questions related to QR code scams, if you are concerned about all the fraud calls coming on your phone claiming that they are calling from IRS or giving you some special offers online and much more, well, this program is for you. It is a pleasure to have Lalit Aluwalia on our program. Lalit is the founder and CEO of Digital X Force and I Trust mm -hmm. X Force. Lalit, thank you so very much for joining us on TV Asia's brand new The Cyber Watch Show. And thank you, Vikas, for such a warm introduction. And hello, everyone, and namaste to all our like Bharatwazi, you know, wherever you are. Greetings to all and Happy New Year. First of all, Vikas, thank you to you and thank you to TV Asia for this wonderful opportunity and the platform. I can't be thankful enough in the new world, what we call as digital world, when everything is transforming at such a speed and such a pace, the cyber threats are also evolving every day. Absolutely. And Absolutely. as you rightfully said, with this new digital age, when we all try to become smart, it's important to become secure smart. Right, right. And hence, why the cyber watch becomes very important because I really see everywhere in every facet of life where each and everyone is getting impacted with this. Lalit, mm -hmm. you just mentioned about security, safety, privacy, yeah. you know, that's very significant in present day and age. Mm -hmm. Let's lay the foundation of our program and set the tone uh, of our yeah. show so that the viewers, uh, you know, understand in times to come what to expect and mm -hmm. we make them part of the series from the very beginning itself. Okay. Make us understand what is cybersecurity. Absolutely. And this is a very important question because, and I think even for the audience and whoever is watching, I like to simplify certain things. Because many people think cybersecurity is a very technical subject. I like to say it's about just like in a physical world, when we go out, we do certain things, even crossing a road. We kind of like to you know, observe certain patterns. Watch left, watch right, watch left. What are we trying to do? We're trying to like secure and, and provide a safe environment for ourselves. When we like lock our homes with all the you know, surveillance systems or businesses, what are we trying to do physical security? We're trying to secure. The same way, those same transactions that we were planning, to, we're doing in a physical form, like banking, paying bills, and everything like you know, shopping wise, now going digital shopping. These are like some of the things which we have now traditionally been used to, but what about self-driving cars? Mm -hmm. What about the space tourism? During the COVID times, we all experienced the remote healthcare, the remote workforces, working safely from home. Sure. All of that is a very good examples of digital world. Right. Now, anything that is getting digital is what we call is vulnerable. Means it can be attacked. And you don't want to fall victim mm -hmm. of that particular cyber attack. Right, right. And hence, why cybersecurity? Now, for the people who are well versed in the cybersecurity, like who have been in this domain, they will tell you cybersecurity makes up of three prime domains mm -hmm. confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, what is confidentiality? 
this is my data. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure my data is secure. And we all worry about, kisi ne mera social security card chura hai, kisi ne mera credit card chura hai, or my driver license or date of birth. These are like you know, common examples right. of confidential data. Right. You don't want to make sure that gets compromised. That's confidentiality. Mm -hmm. What if the data itself gets compromised? Mm -hmm. Means, let's say banking institute. I have $100, $100 shows up $50. Who made that change? How did the change really happen? The data corruption, or somebody like really messing up with the data. That's the integrity. Last but not least, let's say we're trying to like buy something during the Christmas holiday shopping and the service is not available. Or you were in the self-driving car and the car stops all of a sudden. Right. It's all digital services and hence why the cybersecurity comprises of these three dimensions. Right. But all in all, for everyone, for the practical usage, anything that is digital can be compromised because it's over the wire and somebody can like snoop in and like when this within, like you, know, you can really be compromised there. Right. That's why we need to address these things in a very practical fashion because this is everybody's responsibility and everybody's job to stay secure and safe. E-commerce sites or many of these companies, you know, when they sell, try to sell their products mm -hmm. and services to the right. consumers, they want to sell the products and services, but they mm -hmm. do not educate the consumers that what could go wrong mm -hmm. if this particular website right. or the portal gets hacked. Correct. Because you know when we talk about privacy over here, right. well, your entire data, entire information can go mm. uh, around the world, you know, and right. that's what hackers are looking for. Shouldn't it be the responsibility of the providers to the consumers mm. how to safely use uh, you know, uh, their e-commerce sites right. and what are the cybersecurity norms there? No, I think because, first of all, this is a great question and a great example that you put forth, right? And it's a very common use. I think we all experience that online shopping, e-commerce, buying something, in whichever facet you want to take it. Sure. Now, when we talk about the aspect of, is this not the businesses or the providers responsible? It is, definitely it is. Because when they're trying to sell something, they're providing a service, it should be secure. But there is also a responsibility of a consumer mm -hmm. to make sure they're safely consuming it as well. Right. And I can give you an example. You have to watch that it's a secure website, it's authentic. Those things should be like served and you know, awareness should be created. Right. But what if I have an online ID and password and I decide to share with five other people? Right. Or I decide to put something which is password is password. Mm. Now who's gonna secure me from that? Right. This business is not going to secure you from right. that. Speaking of the passwords, people try because they mm -hmm. have you know different passwords for different right. websites. Yeah, they store all that information on their smartphones. Mm -hmm. or maybe they would you know write into a diary or something like that. You know, sometimes they end up forgetting where that diary is. But the point I'm trying to say is, when yeah. you're writing down those user IDs and passwords mm -hmm. on your phone, what if you lose that phone or somebody hacks your phone itself? Right. Your data is out there in the public domain. So let me give you a very important statistic, statistic on this one. Okay. Right. So on an average now, it used to be like 20 to 25. Right. Now it's more than 40 plus services mm. where we have online accounts. Mm. And you go and check today when you go home, how many of online IDs and passwords I have. Now humanly, it's not possible to remember. And it's very tough, right? right? So what do we do? Either we all keep the same password throughout, so it's easy to remember, right. unless the website forces you to know you cannot have this, right? Correct. Or what happens is, we basically like, you know, try to like write those things down and everything else in there. Right. Now, one of the common problems we are seeing is that because you keep the same password, and 67% or higher chances are that you have the same password, right. I only need to like have one compromise from one website. Mm -hmm. And from there, I can go and hack into other websites. You can retrieve entire data from there. Exactly. Now, there's nothing wrong keeping the password, which is strong password. Right. But how you're really interacting with the websites and how you're really communicating is something that you have to pay attention to. Wow. Break mm -hmm. this down for our viewers. You see, 
saving the password and the user IDs mm. is one essential component because that's the gateway from which you Correct. get into any site. You know, they first of all, most mm. of these sites encourage you to have a create a user ID and password. Right. And as I was saying, that sometimes we write the user ID and password on the phone or in a diary mm. and. Our laptops, our computers today, they give us the provision of storing that password through mm. a biometric. You have Absolutely. your finger or a thumbprint over there, and that's how it reads. Now, so, a computer right. memorizes it, but mm. we forget what our <laughs> password was. Yes. So that makes a challenging situation as well. So I think um, before coming to the solution, right. first of all, the bathroom I just told you about, right? Right. Has to be updated. So, Let's make it more practical. Where do you keep your jewelry? Mm -hmm. Do you keep it at home? Well, we keep it in the safe in the bank. Safe in the bank, right? right. There's a place the to behold. Safe deposit. Safe deposit, yeah. right? Yeah. Where do you keep all your money or cash? Again, in the banks. Right. Somewhere, right? In the lockers and depo safe deposit. Where do you keep your property papers and stuff, their passport and stuff? Something very secure Correct. in certain places. Correct. You kind of segment it. Right. But make sure they're very securely stored. Same thing happens when you're like not talking about, consider the keys like to the kingdom. You gotta like really safely secure that as well. Now there are plenty of solutions out there which I would call as password safe. Mm -hmm. What they really do is, this is the main mechanism of one safe that can provide passwords to all these things. And guess what, the beauty of this password safe is they actually circulate the password too. Right. And that's the right way to actually do it, mm -hmm. number one where it's not constant or static, that the mechanics already changes it. All you need to know is one key, which is now have two-factor authentication. Right. I mean, say two-factor, two-factor method. One I know, right. the other one that I can only access. Nobody else can. Right. That's a two-factor. Just SMS code out there, kisi ke paas. Right, the OTP number. OTP out there. Yeah. yeah, email me, right? Right. Right. Why? Because even if my password is compromised, mm. Now my device or that other mechanism also has to be compromised. Right, right, and that's for the verification purpose. That's for the verification purposes, but it adds additional layer of security. security. Correct. When you apply that and you have this password safe like method, now that is configured against, so when you're logging in, even if it's cached, guess what, it's circulating, it's changing. Right. You cannot do anything with the old password. Right. In fact, because you'll be surprised, there are many websites now they don't even let you like, actually log in with passwords anymore. Uh -huh. it's, the it's become passwordless. So it's it, like retina detection? Well, that's the biometric. It's still like you know, part of you. Right. But they will actually authenticate you mm -hmm. or verify you by sending you the code mechanism. Oh, wow. Okay. Because they are assuming your password is already compromised. Right, right. Now, these are the new developments that we want to talk mm -hmm. about, learn in this particular program. Viewers, we're going to take a quick short break over here, but before we go for the break, here's a special Cyber Watch news flash for you. Leading IT firm HCL Technologies faces ransomware incident. In a recent cyber incident, HCL Technologies, a leading Indian IT consulting firm, reported a ransomware attack within an isolated cloud environment for a specific project. The company promptly informed investors and stakeholders, emphasizing that no discernible impact had occurred across its broader network. However, the incident triggered a comprehensive investigation, with the company collaborating closely with relevant stakeholders to identify the root cause and take corrective action. HCL Technologies, currently the fourth largest Indian technology company by market capitalization, assured that cybersecurity and data protection remain top priorities. Despite this assurance, the incident led to a temporary dip in the company's share price, highlighting the market's sensitivity to cybersecurity events. The incident aligns with a broader trend in India, which has been identified as the third most targeted country by cyber attacks. It's time for us to take a short commercial break over here. We'll be right back after these messages. Dalit, once again, welcome to TV Asia. Thank you. Brand new, the CyberWatch show. You know, prior to the break, we were talking about password, how significant it is storing mm -hmm. the password and our user IDs, and you were guiding us mm -hmm. how the different layers of security 
have started taking place. So the question over here is, mm -hmm. what should we be doing? Should we be uh, creating our own password and ID? Should we follow the auto-generated mm -hmm. uh, user ID and password? And thirdly, is it more safe and secure to log in without a user ID and password, mm -hmm. you know, maybe through biometrics or the other forms uh, of yeah. logging in? I think the, um, first of all, it's always good to have multiple factors, mm -hmm. which is not relying on one layer. When I'm only putting my password and I'm not taking the SMS or the token OTP, then I'm just subjecting myself to a compromise. Whoever knows my password, whether I created it or they got hold of the auto-generated one, because there could be other ways I can get hold of that. You're subjecting yourself to a compromise. So I always encourage and highly recommend, where possible and as much as possible, use the two-factor authentication. Now, you don't realize, I'm telling the public right now, when you're even accessing your Gmail accounts, which most of you are, Gmail also has a two-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. And if you, anyone wants to take a second guess on what that second factor is, is actually your machine itself. So wow. if you're logging from the machine that it trusts, that's your second factor that, yes, I trust you. Mm -hmm. Try logging into Gmail from somebody else's machine or a different device. Right. It will actually verify you in another way before it actually grants access. To, to log into the website. Exactly. Why? Because it's trying to really build that additional layer of security. Right. When we say, like, you know, the passwordless security, when we said, like, you know, you don't need to have this one, the whole passwordless security concept is you don't need to create a password anymore. I will create you with other factors. Mm -hmm. Even like sending you the OTP token that you have to put in and the trusted device. Combine, I like to do that. Or I know because enough that I know what his context is right. and it's coming in and I get to see. Of course, biometrics and stuff are additional layers you add. Right. When your thumbprint or the red iris scan on the phones, it's nothing but the biometric added to your first factor itself. Right. So which, whichever way you want to go, it's about really adding that additional layer. And frankly speaking, it's not a user inconvenience anymore in today's world. Mm -hmm. Because we all have got so familiarized. Right. In fact, if we do not have a website or a provider, I will highly recommend do not sign up for such a website. Right, right, right. Interesting. You know, Lalit, TV Asia's uh, demographic uh, mm -hmm. spans from eight through 80, you know, and there are, uh, you know, individuals from all walks of life, all age groups, uh, and, you know, from all, um, mm -hmm. from all over India, different parts of India. And uh, what's significant here to understand is that mm -hmm. students face the cybersecurity challenges in their own way, you know, yes. be it in the school, be it in the college. Uh, professionals who are in the working space, you know, whether they are just entering into the professional career world mm -hmm. or they are seasoned, right. but they have their own challenges. And uh, seniors categorically, you know, mm. who just easily get enticed with some of the texts or emails that they get, you know, and they end mm. up just pressing those links and their phones get hacked, you know. And yep. sometimes, uh, you know, it, it's the family plans or so much more, so much data yep. is in there that's get, that gets leaked out. Right. तो मेरी आपसे ये एक गुजारिश रहेगी कि जहां हम साइबर वॉच शो में हम अलग-अलग एज ग्रुप्स के बारे में थोड़ा-थोड़ा बात करें उनको एजुकेट करें खासतौर पे सीनियर्स को कि उनको साइबर वर्ल्ड में रहते हुए किन-किन पहलुओं पर किन-किन चीजों पर गौर करना बहुत जरूरी है देन ऑफ कोर्स वी विल हैव अ स्पेशल एपिसोड फॉर द प्रोफेशनल इंडिविजुअल्स एंड देन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स एज वेल and then we will definitely, as the you know season unfolds, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we will touch on uh, various areas such as uh, healthcare, right. real estate, uh, whether you yourself are the in the IT areas, career perspective, what the mm. options are, what are the upcoming job opportunities right. in cybersecurity. If you want to uh, take a course in cybersecurity, what your focus areas should be. So mm. we will be touching on various aspects in the Cyber Watch series. Lalit, um, I'm absolutely curious and fascinated to know that 
how did you got so involved in cyber security walk us through your journey yes. uh, i mean uh, you know i i understand that uh, you mm. took your early education in punjab india migrated to united states and mm. you've headed some of the top notch multinational companies and have traveled extensively walk yes. us through your journey absolutely because is is let me put this it's been a blessing mm. because where i sit today it has given me an opportunity to help the community and 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 serve with purpose. Having said that, when I was graduating, as majority of the folks will relate, um, I did my engineering at Topper Institute, Patiala. Um, really did good what I did, but then got into cybersecurity more as not a discipline, but something that we were trying to get into. So the single sign-on. So job applications may log in karte ho. There are 50 applications or 10 applications. But you have to log in one time and the rest of you automatically ho That single sign-on function is what we were developing right after when I graduated from the college. That's how I got into cybersecurity because there was no such discipline. In today's date, there were masters in cybersecurity or these courses. Hain. Correct. Tab kuch tha. Absolutely. There was nothing over there. Exactly. Right. So that got me into you know, even my, those bigger firms like PwC, Deloitte, Accenture. And I was lucky to like serve some of the multinational Fortune 100 to Fortune 500 companies, seeing a lot of different technology companies come through. And that, of course, something that started as a job mm -hmm. became my passion. The passion now is leading to a mission. Mm -hmm. And that's where I sit in front of you. Right. So of course, as Vikas, you said, it touches every facet. I call it cybersecurity for all. In fact, we'll touch the concept of digital trust sure. in subsequent sections. Right. Because not just about cybersecurity anymore. Because what then gay when I was just consuming digital. Right. In today's age, I live in the digital. Sure. Let me also ask you, you know, about your passion and mission mm -hmm. and of course the mandate at uh, Digital X Force mm -hmm. and I Trust X Force. Absolutely. So the passion is really make a difference with the talent, the experience, the skills that God gave me, which was cybersecurity. How we can really make this world a better, a safer, a secure world. So that no one, doesn't matter which age group they come from, whether it's a kid, a high schooler, or like someone, you know, parents age. Right. They all can live the secure or this digital world very securely. The mission really became when I see across the board, and it's a little bit unfortunate that cybersecurity has also become a money-making game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I correlate that to the physical ecosystem, when I, like, you know, the patriotism, Army, the Navy, the Marines, right? Or the police force that we have, that work day in, day out. And hats off to them for all the wonderful work they do. What of their prime purpose was money? What do you think what kind of society and nations we will be living in? Mm. And I really feel the digital is a new warfront for now, for us. We talk about cyber warfare whenever like a new nation activism like, you know, or things happen, right? Then the war comes. Sure. Why? Because that is the new frontier mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. In that case, the first line of defense is going to be how secure our digital workforce is. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be money first approach. That's my mission, and that's our mission now, to really not make it money. See, money falls. Anything that you bring of value, money follows. But is there a bigger purpose behind it? And when there's a purpose behind it, there's always a mission. Right. That's how we you know, phrase ourselves. And we call it, may the cyber force be with you, right. or the X force be with you. Viewers, we're going to take a quick short break over here, and we'll resume our conversation with Lalit Aluwalia on the other side of the break. And yes, we'll include your questions as well. We'll be right back after these messages. Thank you so much for giving us the insight and laying the foundation uh, what viewers can expect in the special series in times to come. I think it's a great start for 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. And as a special feature of the CyberWatch show, we're gonna take the questions and queries of our viewers uh, mm -hmm. you know, who are watching this program across that. North America, whatever their questions and concerns are. So here's a question that I have from uh, Disha Nair uh, from Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia. Let's take a look at it, and I would appreciate your insight and sure. uh, your expert guidance to uh, Disha. 
Hi, I'm Disha Nair and my question for you is, what is your biggest concern if your personal data is exposed online? Thank you, Disha, for this great question. Um, I think it's important to understand, first of all, how the data can be misused across the board, because that's very critical for the audience to understand how important it is to not protect your data. And now, the most common way your data gets compromised, as you can all imagine, is to the online usage. Now, when I say online, you get lured into like different links, whether it's to like purchase something or give away information or ask to like really share the information in some ways. There are a lot of different ways that data gets compromised, and of course, not to say when we like, you know, put things on the social media and other things, you gotta be very careful what you're sharing and how much you're sharing. How the data gets used? Credit card theft, really getting into like, you know, your pension funds or retirement funds. It could also be used to commit some, some other kind of fraud, means I can buy something on your name without even you knowing, just like, you know, the credit card thefts on the gas stations. I might be like really buying gas for my car on your like dime. So the number of ways you can really be harmed where I really see the biggest fear, as we now are getting into the next phase of digital, where the loss is not just restricted to the loss of data or the loss of finances. Where things that you're consuming digital and packed to the compromise, it could result into a bigger loss, social reputation or loss of life. This is where I just feel like the biggest fear of the data loss and hence why we need to protect data. So I'll encourage you all mm -hmm. to be part of uh, the CyberWatch show. Send in your questions and queries to us okay. at cyberwatch at tvasiausa.com. And of course, you can reach out to Lalit Ali Walia directly on his social media handle as well. Lalit, would you like to give the insight about mm -hmm. information about your social media handles? Absolutely. Feel free to reach out at LinkedIn, at Twitter, which is X now. Yeah. <laughs> which is part of our cyber exports, thanks digital exports, and exactly, thanks Elon Musk. Uh, but no, uh, we're always available, we can help or we can get you in touch with others as well. We have two websites as well, Digital X Force and itrustxforce.com. We always put valuable data or informative data on that too. Please feel free to like and access there. But yes, through this channel and this platform, we'll make ourselves available too. So please send in your queries anytime. And together, Let's fight the dark side. May the X-Force be with you. Lalit, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so very much, viewers. Until next time, this is Vikas Tangia signing off.